Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to- And, uh, we actually have a very, very special episode for you guys today. Cause we have a very special interview lined up for you. This is very- This is very surprising and a huge honor for me. Um, if you grew up in the 80s and early 90s, then this is the episode for you. My guest tonight played an important role with the company. He has played Mr. Munch and of course the one and only Chuck E. Cheese. Please welcome the legendary Mr. Scott Wilson. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing really well. Thank you, Ted. It was Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time on your busy schedule to do this for us. It's, it's a huge honor. I'm definitely honored to do this with you especially. Um, awesome. Happy to, happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, before we begin, I do want to say um, I know a lot of fans are gonna love have you, love seeing you on the show, and uh, you know, and of course, people really love your Chucky, especially, uh, especially for me, because I, I mean, I never grew up in the '90s, but uh, you know, Chucky kind of meant a lot to me, and I grew up watching your Chucky because your a lot of your shows were on YouTube, because that's what was available at the time. So, um, yep. especially as a rising voice actor, so thank you for making those magic moments for us, and thank you uh, again for doing this. I'll be you're welcome. It's, <laughs> it was fun, fun to do. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, um, speaking of Chuck E. Cheese, let's begin with how your journey began. So, where did your relationship begin with Chuck E. Cheese, and how did you get into the voice acting industry? Where does that begin? Well, it was the first actual exposure to Chuck E. Cheese was, believe it or not, as a guest of Chuck E. Cheese. I, I walked in to. It was actually the first location in San Jose, California. I had actually lived uh, basically across the street from what was then called Town and Country Village, and which was an outdoor mall, and uh, Chuck E. Cheese had opened up there. And actually this gas station that we frequented, my family and a lot of our friends, we just kind of, I don't know why it was a hangout, but everybody knew Lou and the Exxon station and so Lou had said to me one time, he says, hey, have you been over to that new pizza place called Chuck E. Cheese's? And I'm like, no. And he goes, man, you got to go there. It's wild. They got these moving, you know, animals coming out of the wall. So curiosity, I walked, I literally walked over and walked inside and there it was, Chuck E. Cheese, you know, kind of this dark, you know, cavernous uh, type of uh, uh, facility. And uh, I didn't eat there the first time. I just kind of observed. Um, so uh, that was my first exposure to Chuck E. Cheese. And, um, you know, I didn't really pay attention to the shows. I mean, it was kind of a nuance to the whole environment. At that time, you know, the, the pizza entertainment, if you will, there was these pe what they call pizza and pipes. They would go get these pipe organs from all these old theaters and they'd restore them and put them in these pizza parlors and hire these guys that used to play these organs and that was kind of the thing you know that was the that was the entertainment of the old pizza days and um so chuck e cheese was kind of a new new groundbreaking thing um and so that was my first exposure to chuck e cheese believe it or not yeah but i bet the how was it a lot different back then than to what it is now? Like, how different would you say the experience was? Uh, oh yeah, it was. I mean, you're talking 1977, so um, the animatronics were all very crude, uh, pneumatic animatronics. They weren't digital in all in any way. So on off, on off, on off. And each of these heads, if you will only had maybe 12 to 14 movements right uh mouth uh, turn their head uh, maybe a couple of them had ears you know things like that so no it was it was way cruder um in in the presentation but the other thing that was really different was just the whole dialogue and the non-pc uh dialogue so you know, at that time, um, the original characters for that first year were John Woodlock, Scott Pollan, Joe Spano. Um, can't remember who Pas well, Pasquale was Spano. Uh, Nancy Lennon was 
the chicken. I don't know if she did any of the other characters. And then Mr. Munch really didn't say much until I came along and then I did like the second or third show and I started doing Munch. So um, that was about it. I mean, it was, and it was really crude dialogue. I mean, there was nothing, I mean, they were, you know, Chucky would call Jasper stupid idiot. Uh, uh, you know, they were just, it was, it was uh, definitely adult humor. It was more adult. I mean, I'm not saying in a bad way. It was just more, it wasn't for kids. It wasn't Mickey Mouse by any stretch. Right. And, and, and I, Chucky was always known as a rat. It wasn't, he wasn't known as the mouse. He was never called a mouse. He was, in fact, I think the, the mom was Chuck E. Cheese the rat where it's at. Right. So. <laughs> And of course, he always had like that iconic red derby. Of course. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was him. And, and, and the early Chuck E. Cheese, he smoked a cigar. That's true. That's very true. Um, yeah. So cigar out of his hand, I think. A year into it, year and a half into it, but the early Chucky was a cigar smoking guy. And then, of course, later on. Uh, they also did they, the Christmas special, the Christmas that almost wasn't, which you actually did a song for, which the team works. Well, that's getting. That's when I started doing Chuck E. Cheese. Actually, was that the, um, was that the was first one? Thinking, well, yeah, because what? The, yeah, you're right. The Christmas was all pleasant, and uh, I would do some of the, some of the songs because John couldn't sing. Right. So I would come. In, do the singing, Chucky. And um, as I recall, their song called Teamwork. Everything is easier with teamwork. <laughs> Better, smoother, easier work. So um, we were in the studio, and John just couldn't get it. And it, and the guy they hired this guy from Disney to produce and produce him direct. And um, he comes flying in the studio and points to me and you do that so I went out there and I laid it down in one take and uh, my understanding was Nolan was standing in the studio at the time and turned to somebody and said that's my new Chuck E. G. Oh wow so that's how I was told and remember it and when I talked to Nolan many years later he affirmed that so <laughs> that's my first to it <laughs> that's awesome um but of course uh didn't you also do jasper and pasquale at one point as well you know i did pasquale um on some pickup lines uh you know because the guys you know scott and joe were la guys and you know to fly them in if we need to pick up or do something special or change a line or whatever so i would come in and you know try to more, more pasquale than Jasper, and so if there was a pickup line that needed to be done because I could imitate Joe a little bit with Pasquale, I couldn't get dots. Uh, Jasper, it was it was nuanced out there, and I just I couldn't I couldn't get it. Right. So, uh, but I uh, I could match Joe's Pasquale a little bit. So um, I would go in there, and if it was a Jasper line, they would just change it to a Pasquale line or a Chuck line or a Munch. But yeah, I did some of that, you know, fill-in stuff. Right, absolutely. But also, did you also have a favorite moment when it came to, like, the recording sessions or when you, like, were filming a show? Do you have, like, a favorite moment, favorite memory? Favorite moment? Oh, there's a lot of, a lot of great moments. Uh, you know, when, when, when I started, well, first of all, when I was just doing the voices, it was, you know, I'd come in there, do a gig for two, two, two days, and then leave them you know that was that was kind of it when i got contracted to start doing the shows producing them and doing the videos and all that that the whole dynamic changed right uh, of my response and believe it or not you know doing the voices got to be more pain you know because it was like i was so wrapped up in the whole show that oh god i gotta go in there and record the voices now so <laughs> That was uh, that was uh, tough, you know, just to kind of get through that um, and keep the enthusiasm. Because you know, the other people, um, though Carlisa worked with me, but 
the other guys that were doing the voices like Charles and uh, Bob West and people like that, you know, you wanted to stay up for them because they came and they, they would bust out and you want to make sure that you kept up with them. So, um, but um, highlights, I mean, golly, there's so many. I mean, we had, I was the first to animate Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, wow. uh, that whole opener where he throws he through the, uh, the, he'd never been animated, fully animated. He'd been storyboarded, that but almost wasn't, but he never was fully animated. So we were the first to fully animate him. So that was kind of a highlight. Um, you know, we were the first to do film, shoot film, not video, film, uh, with uh, uh, Starry, Star, uh, Lucky Star, and, um, you know, so a lot of the others, which a lot was a lot more costly because developing film and transferring it all. Uh, of course, today, shooting HD, so there is no film anymore, but back then, shooting film, that was kind of, you know, the whole nuance of what the film looked like was kind of fun. Um, you know, we had some favorite songs, you know, we were the, we did the originals, you know, in that 90, 91 year, but they all were original songs, because nobody wanted to pay rights, and then, you know, the guys that were running Chuck E were like, oh, well, but we can't sing along with them, and which means that nobody liked them, which wasn't really true. But you know, it was you. We had we had our, our challenges with ownership and management, and what they liked and what somebody else thought they liked, and you know, then the marketing department, which you know, the show department was kind of a the underling to the marketing department. The marketing department, of course, had more dollars, so like bigger expense, yeah, you know, for commercials and stuff like that. But, you know, it was, um, you know, we came up with some good work. And I sit and watch the videos today. And, you know, I'm still in touch with Charles and Lee, who wrote uh, a lot of the songs in the, let's call it the second half of Chucky, or second two-thirds of, of my Chucky production years. And um, I, I still think those songs hold, hold up today. I mean... Um, Save Me From Extinction. I mean, you listen to that song. That's a that's a great tune. Absolutely. It's um, you listen to uh, 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 The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Uh, you listen to Old McDonald, the way we did McDonald. Yeah. That's killer. That's so uh, that, The arrangements that were kicked out uh, from Lee were really, really well done. I mean, uh, and so they still hold the test of time. And I say those videos still, you know, sure they're they're older styles and stuff, but they're well done compared to even today. I would stack those videos up uh, to today's stuff at any time. Absolutely, and some of those songs are still used today too, and that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I just too bad I didn't sign up for residuals, especially the birthday. Right. Yeah, I'd have been a millionaire. <laughs> Um, how long would the recording sessions or like the film shoots would go? How long would they go for? Usually. Uh, well, usually it was six songs, three segments, six songs, so two songs a segment. Um, from start to finish with pre-production, scripting, storyboarding, the video part would take, uh, editing, shooting, editing, video would take probably two months. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, casting, all that, yeah. From beginning to end, two months. Um, music and recording stuff, from arranging to session to mixing, about a week. Oh, wow. A week to ten days. Oof. Yeah. That, that's, it, was that's... A, it was a, we were doing four or five shows a year. It was a, it was a grind. I mean, right. it was, and then you'd have a Christmas show or a summer show or, you know, a special or whatever, you know, a live show, uh, you know. So, we were busy. I bet we were I busy bet. for that three. Sounds like it. Great, we were busy. Yeah. Um, speaking of shows, did you actually have a particular favorite you liked doing when you were voicing the characters? Uh, yeah, I mean. I had favorite segments. I would say um, 
Yeah, more so segments. I mean, I love the Christmas show we did with the Kentucky Derby and oh, yeah. that whole the Santa Claus is coming to town and and uh, rocking around the Christmas tree and shooting on that set yeah. was fun. Um, and then, of course, the Kentucky Derby and Don Pardo doing the boy. And uh, so all in all, that was I think that was a really quality show. I like couple of the first shows that we did with the, just the, the real uh, simple original song, the puppeteering and Charlie and Dan's puppeteering and, you know, just the little cell animations that they would kind of edit in and, you know, so those were fun. Um, but I would probably say one of my overall favorite segments was um, the summer segment with uh, Little Red Corvette and, uh, you know, um, oh, that, that going to take your T-Bird away. Uh, that's going to take your T-Bird away. Um, that whole that whole summer show. Yeah, that, that was, was fun. One. That was fun to do. We shot that all in California. Yeah, that was a good one. I, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. Old McDonald, I'm also fond of because I really was very fond of Jim Newberry. Um, God rest his soul, but uh, he was a great guy, and he played Old McDonald, and he was that. That was he was just a fun guy to be around. The kids loved working with the kids. They were just uh, that that uh, lucky star. You know that was that was an interesting evening. We didn't start shooting until about nine o'clock. It was our, our first time shooting film. We started shooting about eight or nine o'clock at night. We didn't wrap till three in the morning. Oh wow! And I out there dancing in the back of Deep Ellum. This is before Deep Ellum was ever kind of gentrified. So we were behind these torn out buildings shooting. And if you look at the video, you'll see what I'm talking. About. Right. Um. And uh, so it's it's amazing. <laughs> I bet. So that. That was fun, but I got I got a little bit chewed out for that for having these kids out. Uh, but they were all understanding, and everybody was cool. And you know, they knew that our heart was in the right place. We weren't just trying to be jerks and all that stuff. And right. we took good care of them. But it didn't happen again. Let's just say that. Right. Um, the basketball segment with the um, gospel choir that was another. That, in fact, that's a great. Yeah, that was a classic. Yeah, that's really good. Um, but if you ever had an opportunity to go back to go back with Chuck E. Cheese, would you ever do it? Um, yeah, of course. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. In fact, I'm surprised I haven't. I, I I thought with all the changeover, I you know I, I had lunch with Mike Maguziak before they went, to Chuck e. and you know in the Richards Group and all that, and. Uh, you know, this is before they had selected the agency to uh, kind of either do the rebranding or whatever they were going to do. And I told them, I said, you know, the thing is, when you're Chuck E. Cheese, you got to remember that was the that's the second most popular eye candy on for a restaurant behind McDonald's, Ronald McDonald. Right. So when you mess around with that, you're really, I mean, look at Ronald McDonald. They haven't changed him one inkling in 45 years. I mean, uh, maybe his pants are a little different and all that, but for the most part, he looks pretty much the same. Absolutely. And Chucky has evolved. Now, he did need to evolve, but I, I don't think they ever should have moved him off the Peeler Rose design. I, I think that was a mistake. Um, and I, I, I don't think he's iconic today. Now, I know, you know, he's more pc but um, I think you lose a little bit of, of the integrity because people like yourself coming in, you know, we're in the fourth generation of Chuck E. Cheese. If you think about it, it's 1977, you got 97, 2017, now we're into, you know, moving into the fourth generation. You know, and parents want to remember, they want to look back and go, yeah, man, that's how I remember it. Right. They don't want to look at something, ooh. Right. I'm actually one of the only few that's performed all three, actually. I'm one of the only few. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, we do this event called Chucky Con. I don't know if you've heard of that, but uh, it's like a fan well, convention. I, I went to one of them, or two of them. Yeah, with uh, Gabriel. Uh, yeah, one of them I went. I know I went to one. Yeah, Cheese Vention, yeah. Oh. You went to, yeah, Chuck and Con's like a newer event. It's like a fan oh. convention for both Showbiz fans and the Chuck and Cheese fans. It's kind of new. It's kind of started back in 2018. It's a really cool convention. Okay. I, I do work for it, um, you know. It, it, it's really great because you get to see all three of them. So, um, but um, it's it's really fun. You know, it's an honor. It was an honor to do. And, of course, we also yeah. had a, we had, we actually had Jeremy come by as a guest, too. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, Jeremy Blado, yeah. Yeah, I hired Jeremy. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, Jer- I hired him. He was a dancer at Six Flags, and he was a friend of Carlisa's. Right. And I got him to do um, Chucky. Oh, yeah. That- uh, but he was really good at it. And I also brought in Robert Gotcher. Oh, so, okay. Robert and Jeremy, I hired both of those guys. That's that awesome. So, that's awesome. They, they worked with me and got to know the higher-ups, and that's kind of how they they got introduced. That's so awesome. they could be friends with Gene Cram through Carlisa and all that. So, But, yeah, that's uh, that's how I found them from working at Six Flags. They were character uh, character dancers. That is awesome. That is actually really awesome. I, did not, I, didn't, I know that he was from Six Flags, but I didn't know you hired him, so that's, that's a good fact. Yeah. <laughs> I hired him this first time was uh, well, I remember doing Robert doing the mailman right and I hired him for that but I had Robert was also one of the other characters as well um, but Jeremy I always had to do a Chucky and um, I can't remember I'm, I'm sure he was in one of the first two or three shows because again Carlisa was the one that uh, introduced me to him right of course. With a few too. Right. Of course. Um, and of course, um, we're almost out of time. But um, before we go, um, two things. Um, is there any advice who for people who want to get into like the voice acting industry or want to get into the Chuck E. Cheese company, you know, or get into the entertainment industry? Do you have any advice for them? As far as getting voiceover, I mean, you know, it's it, it's a tough performance, tough to get in. And it's a really tight knit, you know, actors, you know, when you're talking film and television and stuff like that, there's a lot goes on your looks and stuff like that. In voiceover, you know, it's really the dynamic you can bring to a character uh, by just using your voice. So, um, you know, it's more than just disguising your voice, a lot of different nuances of um, textures and flavors and things like that. And there's, there's been some good ones over the years with, you know, Jim Cummins and Frank Welkers and go back to, you know, I stepped with Dawes Butler, who was Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, and all those guys. Right. So, uh, but, uh, you know, today it's, it's everything's so digital. Everything, you know, you send in an audition on digital, and, you know, it's been really digital and it's much more uh, concise, but. It's still a very tight knit group. So once you get in and you work and you're consistent, you'll always work. So absolutely. Well, anyways, folks, uh, I'll, Scott, thank you so much for doing this. And before we go, uh, do you want to remind the folks at home what Chucky sounds like? Maybe. Well, sure I do. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? It's your old pal Chucky Cheese, and I hope you're all doing great. Staying safe out there and just taking good care of yourself. All right? It's so good to talk to you, and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Scott Wilson. We will see you all in the next one. Talk to you then. All right, thanks. Thanks.